Here we have a fantastic view of the impressive fourth rail and road bridges crossing a mighty water body which is the Fourth River Estuary, otherwise known as the Firth of Forth in Scotland. A water body is any significant accumulation of water from oceans to small ponds. It may contain salt water, brackish water or fresh water. It also includes wetlands. Wetlands are transition zones from dry to permanently wet ecosystems and comprise such environments as peatlands, bogs, wet meadows, floodplains, floodplain forests and reed beds. Wetlands include flora and fauna habitats which are adapted to unique conditions and the monitoring of wetlands is essential to ensure preservation of biodiversity. The monitoring of wetlands is also important given their multiple functions in the carbon cycle. They are a source of methane and peatlands act as carbon dioxide sinks. Floods are also temporary water bodies, which occur when water submerges usually dry land. Floods often take place along rivers, lakes, seashores or in flat areas, which may become saturated with water, such as after heavy rain. Floods cause physical damage and affect water, food and crop supplies, and may contribute to the spread of waterborne diseases. Inland water bodies in high latitudes provide us with an indicator of climate change and changes in their size are linked to permafrost degradation. SAR remote sensing is particularly suitable for the mapping of water surfaces given that it is based on often relatively simple differences in the backscatter regimes of water and land surfaces. Calm water surfaces are smooth and cause specular reflection leading to low backscatter. Surrounding land surfaces are rougher by comparison and lead to higher backscatter. Challenges in SAR mapping of water bodies occur in vegetated areas with vegetation emerging from the water increasing the surface roughness and therefore also the backscatter. Long wavelengths are preferable in these cases due to better penetration of vegetation cover. Another challenge can occur if there are trees, buildings or other large vertical structures emerging from water bodies. 
The presence of smooth right-angled corners in such areas can produce strong double bounce scattering and enhance the backscatter of the otherwise smooth and therefore low backscattering water surface. Higher backscatter may also be present where there are wet soils, not completely submerged by water. These produce higher backscatter than drier soils due to their increased relative permittivity or dielectric constant. A further difficulty in mapping water bodies may be encountered if there are wind or current driven waves on, water, on the water surface, particularly when these propagate in an orientation perpendicular to the direction of flight, they can increase the roughness of the water surface and produce stronger backscatter. One simple and common method for water body mapping is thresholding. The backscatter below a threshold is classified as a water body, the backscatter above a threshold is classified as dry land. These thresholds can be derived from image histograms. The contrast between the backscatter of land and open water surfaces increases with increasing instance angle. If a choice of polarization is available, HH is more suitable for wetland detection given that it is less affected by vertical vegetation structures and VV is more sensitive to soil moisture and flood conditions. The cross-pole component, such as HV or VH, provides a good discrimination of woody versus herbaceous vegetation types due to its sensitivity to biomass. Other parts of the Firth have seen significant changes to their extents. For example, as a result of land reclamation for industry and agriculture, the inner Firth, beyond these bridges, and as far as the town of Kinkadin, has lost about half of its former intertidal area. Regular monitoring of this and other water bodies is therefore of crucial importance.